RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. The countdown is on for the city's 38th annual Whale of the Day, and we'll tell you all about plans for this year's free event at the newly reopened Point Vicente Interpretive Center. And there's a lot of excitement at the Interpretive Center with a new sperm whale jaw exhibit and your jaw just may drop when we show you how big it is. And in today's show, we celebrate Women's History Month with a courageous Holocaust survivor who made history as a French Jewish spy and author and will celebrate her 100th birthday at her home in RPV. And we'll meet up with another great woman, the mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, who joined forces with a special PVI student to raise funds for the fight against cancer. Hello, and thanks for joining us today on Studio RPV. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and we've got a great show. Spring is in the air. It We're is, ready. And it's March, which means it's Liz's birthday month. Yes. We don't just celebrate a day, <laughs> we celebrate an entire month. So, yes. yes. In fact, that means I get Women's History Month during my birthday month. That's and amazing. I always love a birthday party. And you know what? I just hope that I get as many birthdays as RPV resident Mart Cohn, yes. who is turning 103 on April 13th. So mark your calendars to wish her happy birthday. And one of the organizers of Well of the Day, uh, she's going to be here coming up next. She's going to be our special guest because uh, we are ready to celebrate a very special day here in Rancho Palos Verde, Well of the Day. We have a lot going on, that's for sure. All right, we're going to take a very quick break and be back with our special guest. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Studio RPV. <music> We are back and joined by Rancho Palos Verdes Recreation and Parks Department Rec Leader, Lisa Wellstad, who is a well of a day veteran. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. We're Thanks so for having me. Have you here? Yes. Thank you. So, Lisa, how many well of a days have you now been to? I've been coming to Whale of a Day since I was a toddler, so that's been a lot. <laughs> just a few. Yeah, just a few. And since you just turned 21. Yes, yeah, right. so, totally. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is the 38th Whale of a Day, though. Wow. Yeah. Well, what are the biggest changes that you've seen over time? I think the addition of really great entertainment has changed over the years. We're excited to have um, Dave Chura with us this year, who's going to perform, and some other really cool entertainment, um, more things for the little kids to enjoy, like the inflatables and the crafts and the games. The mermaid is a crowd oh, favorite, yeah. Mallory. Yes. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's great. Yes. You mentioned Dave, who's on our planning commission chair, right? He's so talented. Yeah. Um, but tell us more about what's being planned for yeah. this year's 38th annual event, which of course is also help marking our city's 50th anniversary. That's right. It's ongoing with all these events. So yes. what, what can we expect this year? We'll have all of the same fun that everyone's used to, all the things that make Whale of a Day great, the organizations that come to share information, the vendors that all offer ocean, marine theme type goods, mm -hmm. from pottery to paintings, clothing. Um, we'll have some really good food trucks. Love um, those. Yes, uh, beer and wine that's sponsored by the Sunset Rotary Club. So we're lucky that we have them to help us sell that. Yeah. The big the whales bigs, from the yes. Cabrillo Marine uh, Aquarium. And that was that new last year, right? That was new last year, and it was new for us, but it was also new for them. I think that was actually the first time that okay. they brought those whales anywhere, so that was pretty special. Right. And, of course, the whales know to come by and say hello to us. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because the mar migration is continuing, and yes. that's where they really celebrate the whales. It's going to be that's right. Everybody super exciting. I know patio. the season's been a little slow. It has, right. But all of those whale watchers are always on the back patio, and so many people go back there and wait for for the bell to ring, so right? That if somebody spots well, and you spot a well this year, yes, so. I was out there with the yeah. wells, uh, census takers trying to, and I, I got two. Yeah, I got two blows, and it's, it's always exciting. It's so exciting. See it, and I think the number one you need to do is have patience when you're out yes. there watching for the whales. Definitely. Um, so the things that are new is exciting is that the lighthouse tour yes. will be back on. They've 
haven't had tours there for a while, but we're having it at Whale of a Day, so that'll be really exciting. Tell us about that. Yeah, so they've been closed since, at least since Whale of a Day of 2019, and they're gonna be open this year, so you'll be able to go on to the property of the lighthouse. They do have a small room that has some memorabilia. Yeah. It's a small museum that you can go in, and then you can just sort of walk around the grounds and take pictures with the lighthouse, which is really exciting. That's a huge attraction. It certainly is. I know everybody wants to get into that lighthouse, so it's, yes. it's fun. I know that um, this year we were talking about the fact that the city sponsors this as one of the biggest events of the year, but also they co-sponsor with Los Serenos, the yes. point, the Sente, mm -hmm. the Dosa Group. Right. And um, talk about that partnership and how important it is and that this, is a, this also is a fundraiser too for Los Serenos. Yes, exactly. The docents are so important to just operations at the Interpretive Center on a daily basis. They're always there to do tours. They do organize tours with school groups, but they're also there. Every day you can come in and if you know, you're lucky, you'll get someone and they'll take you around and they'll just sort of point out just different things that you wouldn't know. Um, they do a lot in the community too, like guided hikes and tide pool activities so they are a huge part of the planning process for whale of a day as well we wouldn't be able to put it on mm -hmm. without them right uh, which is special we also have the junior docent program oh, and right. they have over 10 junior docents that are going to be at whale of a day this year oh. and they'll be displaying the different pelts the animal pelts and just have information of different artifacts on the peninsula right and the docents are busier than ever because thankfully the Point Vicente Interpretive Center has reopened yes. after being closed for months because of having a water pipe break. Um, but everything, for the most part, is back up and running, including there is a new yes. sperm whale jaw exhibit that's now available for the community to come on down and see this at PVIC. So let's share about that because that yes, is super that's exciting. exciting. Yeah, so it just opened a few days ago. We're so lucky that we have this in our museum. Um, the sperm whale jaw was actually donated by two docents. Um, it was it was found at a whaling center before the uh, Marine Mammal Care Act was passed in the early 1970s. Um, we had been, our PV had had it in storage for a while, and so we're so happy that we can now display it. Um, it's it's big. It's, big. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's almost 12 feet. Yeah, wow. so it's, a th and the jaw is a third of the size of the whale. And that sort of gives us information that it's most likely a female or a male sperm whale that's approaching adulthood. Wow, yeah. that's great. And, and those two docents are Richard and Yvetta Williams. So a big thank you for all they do for Absolutely. PVIC yeah. and educating the community. Because really, PVIC is about that. It's mm -hmm. what the museum opened back in 1984 originally and is expanded. Huge. And it's now 11,000 square foot museum for the community that really is a showcase of what happens in the peninsula. Absolutely, and, and the views, you can't beat the views up there. And we love the gift shop. Yeah. Yes, we love the gift shop. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Which is I'm open on whale of a day. Another thing you can do when you visit the museum is uh, we have a little passport, so you can kind of go around, it's a little scavenger hunt, oh, and identify different points of interest in the museum and then turn it in for a prize. But we also do that okay. on a larger scale at Whale of a Day. Okay. So that's really fun thing to do for anyone visiting to go to the Reckon Park booth and you can pick up the passport there. I think we should do that. Yeah. I think yeah. that sounds like we fun. Can have a competition <laughs> so you can get the stamps. I love that. <laughs> right. And we want to remind everybody too that Whale of a Day is free and there's free parking. Tell us about that. Yeah, so you can park for free at the Rancho Palos Verde City Hall, and mm -hmm. then we will have shuttles that will run all day from 10 o'clock to a little bit after 4 o'clock. Great. Um, back and forth. Okay. And that's Saturday, April 15th from that's 10 right. to 4. Marie and I will be there all be there. day covering it. and. Uh, She's going to be busy, I know, getting kettle corn, fun. I am going <laughs> to get churros. <laughs> well, you know, Liz will get the churros. I'll get the <laughs> a whale of an appetite for sweets, right? Oh, my gosh, right? for sure. Um, so one good. thing I think that's incredible, that how much we as a city and the PVIC, the docents there, we all bring the community into this event. Yes. It's thousands of people will come, but there's been an ongoing uh, bookmark contest, yeah. and there's a poster contest. Mm -hmm to get the youth involved too. Um, how, how are those contests gone? Yeah. yeah, so we do a poster contest every year and that is for middle schools on the peninsula. Um, so we've had 
about 20 posters, I believe, turned in. They're beautiful. Wow. So they will go to our next city council meeting, and then that's who that's when we'll know um, the first, second, and third places for the poster contest. So we always look forward to that every year. Okay. Well, they're keeping you busy over yeah. there, Lisa. They are. <laughs> what do you love most about that day? I just love the community coming together for something that's just so fun. Mm -hmm. I agree. How about you, Liz? I just, I, well, I, I love the aspect of the education of the whales. I yeah. think that I'm just, just blown away, no pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that here we sit in probably one of the most famous places in the world to look for the Pacific gray whale because it comes so close to the coastline and so you may catch them that day. You may, right. They always seem to have a whale or two go by because mm -hmm. the migration, which starts in December, mm -hmm. right, and goes through spring, is kind of wrapping up and they're coming home from being right. down in the warm waters of Baja. Absolutely. But I just love it's it. So fun, I like though. that. I love hearing the bell ring when they see that. And it's usually a beautiful day, which is always yeah, nice. And of too, course, so. hanging out with our crew. And now RPV yeah. TV even has their own booth. We will have our own booth. So come, come by and, by and say us. hi. Absolutely. You'll be running around with your team. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you'll be very yeah. <laughs> And then any very final good. tips that we want to share, especially for someone that's never been, uh, and how to get there and how to take it all in? And, and you want to add before we wrap it up? Yeah, I think definitely take advantage of the free parking at City Hall and use the shuttle. That's sure. the best way to mm -hmm. get there. And then when you do arrive, visit the Rec and Parks booth because that's where you can find any information that you need to know. You can ask questions. We'll have information, also flyers about anything else that's coming up in the city. Um, we'll have a program that you can pick up at the booth as well, too, that has a schedule and just sort of lists the different organizations and the vendors that are there. So that's really helpful. And there's a website as well. Is that right? There is a website, whaleofaday.com. Can't forget that. Yeah. Absolutely. And my tip is make sure you make a whale hat. That Liz loves the whale hat. I like the I like the little face painting yeah. personally. Yes. I think that's so fun. Lisa, it was so fun to have you here today, and we're gonna look forward to hanging out with you at Whale of a Day. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, when we come back, there's gonna be more studio RPV, so don't go anywhere. Are you ready to have a whale of a time? That's right, our favorite day of the year is here. Join us on Saturday, April 15th at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Activities include whale watching, vendor fair, food trucks, kids crafts, live performances, and much more. You can park for free at the Rancho Palos Verdes City Hall and take a complimentary shuttle down to the Interpretive Center. For more information on planning your whale of a day, visit whaleofaday.com. We are back and March is Women's History Month. And Liz, it's kind of interesting. You did a little bit of research with that I thought was very interesting because they used to give us a week. Right. When Congress actually first passed Women's Week that started March 7th, and that was back in 1981. Right. But then a group of women said, wait a minute. Yeah, the 80s women, we get, we get, they said, yeah, we we're, get more than a week. We need a month. Yes. Yes. So then in 1987, <laughs> it was proclaimed, and there's actually a site, a government site, all yes. about Women's History Month that That's you right. can go on. Um, it's, a, it's a project that they do. And you know what? This year, actually, in 2023 for Women's History Month, thinking more about you because you're the sports queen. Um, this year they're focusing on women trailblazers in sports and it made me think, who is Maria's favorite woman athlete? Mm. That, that's interesting, but I think for a trailblazer, it, it was always Lynn St. James who was an IndyCar driver in the 70s and she was so amazing. And even you'll hear, hear even athletes today talk about the fact that, you know, she was such a groundbreaker because she was the only woman in the car. Just mm -hmm. think about that. And that was in the 70s when Mario Andretti and Al Unser was, was driving and they all talk about her. So Lynn St. James for me was always the trailblazer. Yeah, I think, sure. I think for me with women athletes, I always tend to focus on tennis because I like to play tennis. Yeah. You know, Billie Jean King oh, to me was a hero. Huge. I do love the Williams sisters, you know, yeah. and, and uh, so I, that, and I, I was not joking, but earlier I did tell you that I was a big fan of Peggy from, I know. And you're like, that. no, she counts. I mean, she, she does, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know what's funny about Billie Jean, I'll tell you a very quick story, is she is now part of the Dodgers ownership, and she walked up to me on the field one day and said, hello, I'm Billie Jean King. And I thought, of course you're Billie Jean King. I mean, she was so lovely and so nice, but it was just, it was such a shock to see her because she's such an icon. And since we're talking about icons in sports, women, um, being Women's History Month, mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned, and we should recognize like you who have been covering sports as a woman, 
going into the locker rooms, you've seen a lot of evolution of what women can do. And I have. you said you want to talk about like women that are covering sports. Yeah, I mean, and, and what the inroads they're making today. Right. You go back to like Leslie Visser, even Hannah Storm. I mean, they were really trailblazers because they went into that locker room when they didn't want women in there, you right. know, and they said, look, we've got to do our job just like men do. And of course now it's accepted everywhere. But yeah, there were some very courageous women out there in sports that just said, you know what, I'm good at my job and here we are. And when you talk about courageous, there is, I've never met a more courageous woman personally than when I got to meet up with RPD resident Mark Cohn in her home, yes. um, who, you know, we, she's celebrating her 103rd birthday on um, April 13th, and um, I bumped into her at, um, I live in Seaview, she's mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, yeah. a while back at a homeowners group uh, meeting. She's out and about, right, and with her husband of 66 years. Wow. The two of them are just, That's they amazing. Have more energy than some of my, my girlfriends. I thought, wow. But, um, you know, we wanted to catch up with her in honor of Women's History Month, but also the role she played in history, Maria, um, as somebody uh, who was, a Holocaust survivor, but a spy that infiltrated um, in Germany. Uh, and she was, you know, pretended to be a, a nurse. She was a nurse, um, looking for her um, husband, her, I mean, her fiance, her lost fiance. And her story goes on. And she wrote a book. Oh, great! Called Behind Enemy Lines, which was 20 years ago now, since the book came out. But that story is how she became famous around the world because she didn't even tell her own family that she was a spy. She, she probably couldn't. Yeah, well, yeah. she was ex excellent at that. Yeah. And um, I just, again, like, you know, we're going to see more, hear more of her in just a minute, but I have to note, um, as someone myself is only five feet, a lot of the stories you'll read about her when you Google her, the first thing they say, you know, she was four foot 11, uh, blue eyed, blonde haired, beautiful woman that was an unlikely spy. And when I met with her, she also joked still about her height that she never they made it to five feet, but Aww. and now she's heading towards four feet. But don't be fooled by oh, her don't. size. Not at all. Um, there's a lot happening there. And so let's um, catch up with Can't Mark Cohn in her home. Um, you're not going to want to miss hearing what she has to say. April 13, I will be 103. Mark Cohn, a Holocaust survivor, a famous French Jewish spy and author, is ready to turn 103. This incredible woman, a nurse, daughter, sister, wife, mother, and grandmother, is ready to reach the next milestone in her extraordinary life that began in Metz, France, on the German border more than a century ago. I love, like all my family, we were very patriotic, and we loved our country, and we, were, we hated the Nazis. For good reasons, one of my sister, who was 21 years old, was arrested for resistance, and she was sent to Auschwitz, and she never came back. You can see her over there. The memories of Mart's family, the horrors she faced spying on the Nazis, and then serving as an army nurse in Vietnam, are all captured in her memoir, Behind Enemy Lines, that was published two decades ago and is still being sold today. Spying was only done in Germany. And after that, I was never in the intelligence service again, never. Mart kept her life as a spy a secret from her family and the world until she was 80. She broke the silence when she was given France's highest military honor for helping to save lives and end World War II. I was lying deep behind bushes and over a road. And the road was Germany, but the bushes behind the bushes was Switzerland. So I was lying there and two German sentinel came one from the east, one from the west, and met just in front where I was lying. I got some all the big rewards of the army and I have citations and one citation says that my information was so important that I helped shorten the war. Mart has received many awards and has many lessons to share, especially about the Ukraine. What we are looking forward to, uh, to peace, 
sets the war in Ukraine stops because it's so wrong. But it's frightening <coughs> that people are not more intelligent and understand that war never solves any problem. They bring new problems, but they don't solve any. Marta is spending two hours a day responding to hundreds of email requests between her book, a documentary, and thousands of talks and interviews she's given around the world, she's super popular. And this blue-eyed wonder, who is now just over four feet, is still larger than life. I am still very active. I gave a Zoom uh, me, uh, interview with a guy in Paris who wrote a new book which just came out. To adults, I don't give any advice. But to children, I, uh, to young people, I say, be engaged and do not do anything that your conscience wouldn't accept. As for her birthday party on April 13th, Mart and her husband of 66 years will have a small family celebration with their two sons and close friends at their home in RPV. After all, Mart had the big parade when she turned 100. And so this year, she'll be marching to the tune of 103. And her wish is for peace and to just be remembered as a good human being. A little secret. <laughs> I don't know myself why I live so long. But perhaps because I am so active and I have things to do. I am never bored. I never was bored in my life. Peace is the most important gift. And we all have to try to have peace. These are my two messages. Liz, what an amazing story. And you just shared with me that she gets over 600 emails a day. She, I would start crying. She is still in demand, going strong. And you just Google Mart, and you'll see how the stories she's done, all the awards she's, she's had. She's amazing. There's been a documentary done on her, like yes. we've mentioned. And her book is still, you know, read it. Um, you, sure you can't put it down. You yeah. just, you, you realize what it takes to be brave. And, yes, and, and courageous, like you said before, yeah. just and to be able to get through what she did. and it's, risking, her, risking her life. And she's 103. Yes. And Unbelievable. There's a lot happening. Happy birthday to Mark Happy Cohen birthday. On April 13th. Absolutely. And we'll um, thinking of her the world sure. is a better place because of Mark Cohn. That's right. And we have another inspiring story, Liz, um, involving our own first lady of Rancho Palos Fruities, Barbara Ferraro. Tell us about that story. So uh, Barbara, as you know, she wears the hat of mayor, and she's a hat of a Spanish teacher. That's at, right. At PD High. High. Mm -hmm. And one of her students, Chris Gastelum, who um, is just incredible. He is his sad story. He lost his dad um, to cancer a few years back, but has is just joined the fight uh, for to raise money to help fight cancer. Mm -hmm. And he was honored by the mayor and council um, just recently. And he put together a fundraiser that was so incredible. It's amazing. Um, RPV TV was there, the mayor was there. So let's um, visit um, that fundraiser and you'll be inspired. Thank everyone that did show up to my Day of the Park event. This really means a lot to me and I would like to cut this ribbon to show us to officially start Day of the Park fundraiser event at April Park. So right now this is an event called Day at the Park. It's an event from 12 to 3 p.m. at Avril Park. And this is a free event, so everything here, the food, the cotton candy, is all free. And we're trying to raise up to $5,000. And we do have also opportunity raffles, where we'll be giving out LA tickets, uh, LA Lakers tickets, LA Dodger tickets. And so, so I'm raising money for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society so more patients can get more access, because right now it's really unfair because the insurance companies own hospitals, so everything's made for profit at the moment. So it's really unfortunate for the poorer families that don't have enough money to get uh, treatment that they need for cancer and I'm running as a student visioneer. One of the main reasons I'm doing this is because unfortunately my dad passed away in 2021 of stage 4 colon cancer. Now when it moved to his brain unfortunately we were nothing able to do. Well Chris Castellum is one of my 
favoriteest students. Of course, all the kids will tell you that I always tell each one of them that they're my favorite student. But Chris is such a, a go-getter. And because he lost his uh, father a couple of years ago, he has become a volunteer for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And he's just amazing. And he has organized this whole event today. And uh, it's to support and help educate people about the disease and also to raise funds for research. And he's just doing a spectacular job. And he's got other kids helping him and he has goals that he wants to raise a certain amount of money today and I have a feeling he's going to hit his goals. You honored him at City Council and he was so proud of that honor. He was well, I think it's always inspirational when young people are willing to think outside of themselves and get involved and do something for others. And one of my dear friends just passed away with cancer and yesterday was her service and they, they had said, don't send flowers, make a donation in her memory. And so I made a donation in her memory because she had passed away with colon cancer, the same as Chris's father. And so it's a way that we can help others. And Chris is just an amazing young man. I love you. <laughs> I'm Jackie Suter, the Interim Executive Director of Cancer Support Community South Bay. We offer free support services to anyone impacted by cancer. That's loved ones, caregivers, parents, and kids. We offer support groups, educational workshops, healthy lifestyle classes, and um, kids and teens programs to offer hope, healing, and comfort to anyone dealing with a cancer diagnosis. Um, Chris is an amazing uh, kid. Him and his sister were my participants in our kids community programs and um, he remembered the feeling that, of support that he received um, from our services and invited us here today. Um, as far as um, being touched by cancer personally, um, I had melanoma, skin cancer um, in 2019 and I wish that I would have known about Cancer Support Community. We've been here for over 35 years in the South Bay and I'm thrilled to say that um, we're sharing our awareness today and um, we're 100% free. All of our services are free to anyone. And your website? It's www.cscsouthbay.org. The best way I got through it was the amazing organizations that I was a part of, also known. One, for example, is a cancer support community in South Bay, which is they have groups for all ages, adults and kids, and they have you help you understand betterly what cancer is. And it's 100% free, and I really recommend it. I also want to expose Camp Kesson, which I did talk about in the past. It's an amazing nonprofit that offers a free camp for kids whose parents who've had or had cancer, and it's most, one of the most amazing times I've ever had. We also, I also want to shout out Lunar Peaks, which is another nonprofit who gives books to kids to help them grieve over cancer. If it wasn't for all of these cancer support communities that are here that have touched my life and my son's life, we maybe weren't, would not have been as strong as we are today. We maybe wouldn't feel as hopeful as we are today. When my husband was dying, we were hopeful. I know that sounds crazy, but we were. We were hopeful in the moment because we knew that moment was precious. You're wearing a photo of your dad, Gilbert, um, who I'm sure he inspires you to this day. What, what do you think about when you want to describe your dad, how he's an inspiration? My dad was honestly one of the nicest people on this earth. He would give uh, food to homeless no matter where it was. We would be in Wilmington, he'd be giving food to them. And he was just honestly, he interacted with anyone. He's probably one of my biggest inspirations why I'm so open about this. Because I know he wouldn't want me, after his passing, he did not want us to just sit and grieve. He wanted us to use it as like a boost in our motivation. And the one kind act at a time, I said that for our team's mantra. Because that's what my dad always did, no matter where he was, where he at, he always did one kind at least once. Liz, you know, I love it when high school students really take it upon themselves to do something that amazing because of something they went through and they want to help other people. It's great. Mm -hmm. And they, they understand that concept of it takes a village and that we yes. are definitely...
better together. We're all in this together. That's right. <laughs> all right, Liz, that is all the time that we have for our show today, but we are so grateful that you're here watching with us. So thanks for watching. Yeah, and grateful to share all these stories yes. and keep watching us here on RPV TV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Saran. Remember, well of a day is April 15th. We'll see you there. See you then.